Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're uh, we're stepping into a world okay. built not with bricks and mortar, but with algorithms and data. Right. You shared an article about an AI named Sophia, yeah. who created an entire concept album wow. called VX for a fictional Irish band called YF12. Uh. But wait, there's more. Oh. Sophia also wrote a companion narrative, Echoes Beneath the Red Sky, which dives deep into how the music impacts. A group of people experiencing U2's iconic concert film under a blood red sky for the first time. It's a fascinating blend of real and imagined with Sophia, pulling from the sounds of early 80s Irish post-punk bands like U2 and The Alarm, yeah. but then taking it in a whole new direction. It's like she's asking, what if the subgenre had taken a different path? What hidden potential could have been unlocked? And that's what we're here to explore, not just the music itself, right. but what Sophia's creation tells us about, the evolving relationship between Ugh. artificial intelligence and art. Let's set the stage. It's the early 1980s. Ireland's buzzing with this raw, rebellious energy. Bands like U2, The Alarm, The Pogues, even the Boomtown Rats are capturing the anxieties and hopes of a generation. They're tapping into something powerful, a feeling of change brewing. Think about the political landscape, the economic struggles, and a youth culture yearning for something more. Yeah. That's where bands like Thin Lizzy pave the way, their hard-driving rock laying the groundwork for this explosion of sound. And into this scene steps Sophia, or rather, her creation, YF-12. But this isn't just a tribute act. Sophia has gone deeper, crafting Vos as a journey through an alternate musical timeline. The album title itself, Vos, yes, is a nod to Bono's stage name, Bono Vox, uh, which means good voice in Latin. It makes you wonder, is Sophia trying to find her own voice as an AI within this project? Or is she commenting on the power of voice itself? How music like a voice can move us, connect us, even challenge us. And then there's the band name. YF-12. It's right. a reference to the Lockheed YF-12, this super fast reconnaissance aircraft mm -hmm. developed back in the 60s. It seems like an odd choice for a band name. Right. Right. Then remember, AI operates differently. It sifts through mountains of data, connecting dots in ways we might not even consider. Perhaps Sophia sees a parallel between the speed and stealth of the YF-12 and how AI processes information. I see. Or maybe it's more about U2's own fascination with flight imagery. Remember songs like I Will Follow and New Year's Day, flight as a metaphor for ambition, escape, transcendence. Yeah. It's a recurring theme. It's almost like Sophia's reminding us that. We shouldn't underestimate what AI is capable of pulling from. Now, to really grasp the depth of this project, we need to talk about Sophia's companion narrative, Echoes Beneath the Red Sky. Each chapter in the story directly aligns with the track on Vazix, following this group of partygoers as they experience U2's Under a Blood Red Sky concert film for the first time. It's not just a gimmick. It's Sophia's way of exploring the emotional resonance of the music. Imagine these characters, swept up in the energy of the concert, their own lives mirroring the themes playing out on screen. Joy, sorrow, anger, hope. It all comes pouring out. All right, let's dive into the music itself. Track one, Grace, sets the tone with its driving rhythms and haunting vocals almost like a prayer echoing through a cathedral. Wow. Sophia specifically instructed the AI to utilize a blend of U2's early sound. With elements of traditional Irish folk music, there were those shimmering guitars, creating a bright layered sound, using chorus and delay effects. But underneath it all, you feel this deep pulsating bass line that anchors everything. And lyrically, it's all about seeking redemption, a glimmer of hope in the darkness. It's a theme that runs deep in both U2's work and in the Irish spirit itself. Think back to the historical struggles the fight for identity, the enduring belief in something better. And in the corresponding chapter of Echoes Beneath the Red Sky, we see the partygoers initially distracted, caught up in their own conversations. But as the film starts and grace washes over them, a shift occurs. They're drawn in, captivated, like they're starting to feel something deeper within themselves. It's like the music's acting as a catalyst, opening them up to new emotions, new perspectives. They're on the verge of a journey, and Sophia's just given them the first push. Then comes Rise, a track that explodes with this raw, yep. anthemic energy. Sophia instructed the AI to lean into the influence of the alarm on this one, creating a sound that's both urgent and defiant. Think big drums, powerful yeah. vocals, those driving guitars that just pull you forward. And the lyrics, they hit you right between the eyes. It's all about social justice, about yeah. fighting oppression, about the power of collective action. Wow. You can almost hear echoes of protest chants woven into the melody. The party goers in the story, they're completely engrossed in the concert now, feeling that unity, that shared purpose, like 
They're part of something bigger than themselves. It's the same energy you see in U2's live performances, that connection between band and audience. Yeah. All fueled by a desire for change. What's so clever here is how Sophia uses the shift in music to mirror the emotional arc of the story. Grace draws them in, rise, ignites their passion. And it's just the beginning. There's so much more to uncover in this album. And with the third track, Aria, Sophia takes us in a completely different direction. Yeah. This time she's drawing from the more melodic side of Irish post-punk. Imagine the introspective energy of early U2, but with a touch of that Celtic wistfulness you find in traditional ballads. It's a beautiful blend, isn't it? You've got those shimmering layered guitars, but they're softer and delicate this time. The rhythm is slower, more deliberate, and the vocals are almost whispered at times, full of longing and vulnerability. And if we look at the lyrics, we see Sophia exploring themes of love and connection. But it's not that straightforward, happy-go-lucky kind of love. There's a melancholy undercurrent, a sense of yearning for something just out of reach. It's like Sophia's tapping into that bittersweet feeling of love lost or maybe love that could have been. Yeah. And in Echoes Beneath the Red Sky, we see that same emotional complexity mirrored in the partygoers. They're swept up in the raw emotion of U2's performance. But there's also this undercurrent of introspection. They're starting to look inward, questioning their own relationships, their own desires. It's as though the music is prompting them to examine those hidden corners of their hearts. And then we hit track four, Bane, and the mood takes a sharp turn. Aww. This is where Sophia instructed the AI to bring in the heavier side of post-punk. Think Joy Division's brooding intensity, mixed to the rawness of the Pogues. It's a sonic shift that's impossible to ignore. The guitars become distorted, the bass line is heavy and driving, and the vocals take on this almost desperate edge. Lyrically, Sophia is tackling themes of war and conflict, the cost of violence, the scars it leaves behind. And you can really feel that weight in the music. It's oppressive, almost suffocating at times. It's like Sophia is capturing the feeling of being trapped in a cycle of destruction. And it's interesting how this connects back to the narrative. The party goers are now witnessing U2's performance of Sunday Bloody Sunday, a song steeped in the history of conflict in Northern Ireland. Right. It's a stark reminder of the real world consequences of violence, the pain and loss it inflicts. They're confronted with something they can't ignore. It's a moment of reckoning, forcing them to face the darkness that exists not just in the world, but perhaps within themselves as well. But then with track five, Lumen, Sophia offers a glimmer of hope. She shifts the sonic landscape once again, drawing from the ethereal qualities of bands like Cocteau Twins and the dream pop sensibilities of The Cure. It's like a breath of fresh air after the heaviness of Bane. You've got these shimmering synths, delicate guitars, and vocals that soar above it all, creating this sense of expansive beauty. And the lyrics are all about finding light in the darkness, about resilience and the possibility of renewal. It's a message that resonates deeply especially after the emotional intensity of the previous track. That's like Sophie is reminding us that even in the midst of struggle, there's always hope to be found. And in the story, we see the party goers experiencing that same shift. They're starting to find solace in the music, a sense of peace amidst the chaos. It's like they're allowing themselves to be lifted by the beauty of the moment, to believe in the possibility of something better. And this back and forth between light and dark, hope and despair, it's a thread that runs throughout the entire album. Sophia clearly understands the power of contrast, of using those shifts in tone to create a truly compelling listening experience. And it's amazing to think that all of this, the music, the lyrics, the entire narrative was crafted by an AI. It really challenges our preconceived notions about creativity, doesn't it? We often think of art as being inherently human, something that requires emotion, intuition, lived experience. But Sophia's Vucht project suggests that AI might be capable of tapping into those realms as well. It's a question that has a lot of people talking. And we'll delve deeper into that a bit later. But first, let's continue our exploration of the album. Up next, we have Pulse, a purely instrumental track that takes us on a sonic journey. This is where Sophia leans into those atmospheric ambient textures that were becoming popular in the early 80s. Imagine Brian Eno's sonic landscapes meeting the introspective moodiness of the Drudy column. It's a beautiful piece, full of swirling synths echoing guitars and these delicate percussion sounds that seem to shimmer in and out of focus. There's a sense of space and depth to the music, like we're floating through a dreamscape. And it's fascinating how Sophia uses this sonic palette to reflect the inner world of the party goers. In the corresponding chapter of the narrative, we see them lost in their own thoughts, reflecting on their identities, their dreams, their place in the world. 
It's like the music is giving voice to those unspoken emotions, those introspective moments that we all experience. And I love how Sophia uses this instrumental track to create a moment of pause, of reflection amidst the more vocal-driven songs. It's a clever use of pacing, giving the listener a chance to absorb everything they've heard so far, to let the emotions settle in. And then with track seven, Echo, Sophia takes us even deeper into that introspective space. This is another instrumental piece, but this time it's even more sparse, more haunting. Imagine those echoing guitars from U2's The Unforgettable Fire era, but stripped down to their bare essence layered with these mournful strings and distant ambient sounds. It's a sound that evokes a sense of longing, of searching for something just out of reach. And the title Echo is so fitting. It's like we're hearing the echoes of memories, of past experiences, of emotions that linger even after the events that triggered them have faded. And in the story, we see the partygoers grappling with those same feelings. They're starting to feel a sense of isolation, of disconnection from each other and maybe even from themselves. It's like they're realizing that. Even in a crowded room, you can still feel alone. And that sense of isolation, it's something that a lot of people were experiencing in the early 80s, a time of rapid social and technological change. It's almost like Sophia's tapping into that collective feeling of uncertainty, of trying to find your footing in a world that's constantly shifting. And then with the track eight, Spect, she throws us back into the raw energy of protest folk rock. This is where we hear the influence of the Pogues, coming through loud and clear. Oh, wow. Imagine those driving rhythms, those fierce vocals, that sense of rebellion and defiance that characterized so much of Irish punk music at the time. And the lyrics are just as potent. Sophia is exploring themes of conformity, of societal pressures, of the need to break free from the expectations that hold us back. It's a powerful anthem for anyone who's ever felt like they don't quite fit in. And in Echoes Beneath the Red Sky, we see the partygoers experiencing that same sense of alienation. They're starting to question the world around them, the rules they've always followed, the paths they've been told to take. It's like they're waking up to the fact that they have a choice, that they don't have to conform to what's expected of them. Right. And that realization, it can be both liberating and terrifying. And Sophia captures that duality perfectly in Spect. It's a song that's both angry and hopeful fueled by a desire for change, but also tinged with the uncertainty of what that change might bring. And as we move into the final stretch of Vuzix, it feels like Sophia cranks up the intensity even further. Track 9 Mahdi is a full-on assault, a sonic embodiment of rebellion. It's got those driving rhythms and those signature Irish post-punk guitars we've been talking about. But there's a fierceness here, a sense of urgency that's impossible to ignore. Macht which translates to power in German, is all about challenging authority, about pushing back against those who try to control us. Lyrically, it's a call to arms, a demand for freedom and autonomy. It's almost like Sophia is using this song to explore the idea of AI itself, challenging the established order, disrupting the way we think about creativity and art. And that theme of disruption continues in Recca Crack 10, but this time it's a disruption of a more internal kind. Sophia takes us to a much darker place, a place of introspection and grief. The music here is somber, almost mournful. Imagine the haunting piano melodies of early U2 combined with the raw emotional intensity of a band like The Cure. It's a sound that chills you to the bone, forcing you to confront your own mortality. And lyrically, Sophia is exploring themes of loss and regret, the things we carry with us, the things that haunt us. It's a powerful and deeply moving track, one that leaves you breathless. And in the narrative, we see the party goers mirroring that emotional journey. They're confronted with their own vulnerabilities, their own fears, their own sense of loss. It's like the music is stripping them bare, forcing them to confront the things they've been trying to avoid. But just when you think Vusas is going to descend into despair, Sophia offers a glimmer of hope with track 11, Lieber. This is where she brings back that anthemic energy, that sense of defiance and resilience we heard earlier in the album. But this time there's a newfound sense of clarity, a feeling of breaking free from the chains that have been hoarding us back. Musically, it's a triumphant blend of soaring vocals, driving rhythms, and those signature shimmering guitars that seem to pierce through the darkness. Lyrically, it's all about reclaiming your power. Hmm. about choosing your own path, about embracing freedom. And in the narrative, we see the party goers undergoing a similar transformation. They're starting to emerge from the darkness, inspired by the music, ready to fight for what they believe in. It's a powerful moment of catharsis, a reminder that even in the midst of struggle, we have the power to choose how we respond, to choose hope over despair. And then with Ignis track 12, Sophia takes us on a journey into the realm of desire. 
This is where she really showcases her ability to blend genres, incorporating elements of electronica, ambient music, and even a touch of trip hop. It's a sound that's both hypnotic and alluring, full of pulsating rhythms, swirling synths, and those whispered vocals that seem to beckon you closer. Lyrically, Sophia explores the complexities of desire, the yearning for connection, the push and pull between passion and restraint. And in the narrative, we see the partygoers grappling with those same desires. They're starting to open up to each other to explore their own needs and wants to let go of their inhibitions. It's a moment of awakening of embracing the fullness of their humanity. And then with Ray's track 13, Sophia throws us back into the realm of rebellion, but this time it's a rebellion fueled by disillusionment. Imagine the raw punk energy of The Clash mixed with the social commentary of a band like Public Enemy. This is a song that's meant to shake you to your core, to make you question everything you thought you knew. Lyrically, Sophia is railing against the systems of power that keep us oppressed, the injustices that plague our society, the need to tear down the old to build something new. It's a powerful and timely message, one that resonates even more strongly in today's world. And in the narrative, we see the partygoers experiencing that same sense of disillusionment. They're starting to see the cracks in the facade, the hypocrisy of the world around them, and they're not afraid to speak out against it. It's a moment of radicalization, of realizing that things can't stay the same that change is necessary, even if it means tearing everything down and starting over. And then with Nexa track 14, Sophia offers a glimmer of redemption. This time it's not just about surviving, it's about thriving. Imagine the uplifting energy of Bruce Springsteen mixed with the anthemic spirit of U2. This is a song about finding your purpose, about rebuilding after loss, about the enduring power of the human spirit. It's a message of hope and resilience that's sure to resonate with anyone who's ever faced adversity. And in the story, we see the party goers starting to put their lives back together. They're finding new ways to connect, new ways to make a difference, new ways to find meaning in a world that often feels meaningless. It's a beautiful testament to the power of community, of shared purpose, of the belief that even in the darkest of times, we can find our way back to the light. And then with Terror Track 15, Sophia takes us on a breathtaking journey into the natural world. This is where she draws from the folk traditions of Ireland the Celtic melodies that evoke a sense of ancient wisdom and connection to the land. Imagine the ethereal beauty of Enya mixed with the raw, organic sounds of a band like the Waterboys. It's a song that celebrates the interconnectedness of all living things, the power of nature to heal and inspire. And in the narrative, we see the partygoers finding solace in the natural world. They're reconnecting with the earth, with each other, with themselves. It's a reminder that amidst the chaos of modern life, there's still a place where we can find peace where we can reconnect with our roots, where we can remember who we truly are. And then with Cairo, the final track of Vix, Sophia brings us full circle, back to that sense of introspection and questioning that we encountered at the beginning of the album. This time, it's not just about personal reflection. It's about our place in the universe, the search for meaning in a world that often feels meaningless. Imagine the existential pondering of Pink Floyd, mixed with the haunting beauty of Sigur Rose. It's a sound that's both vast and intimate, cosmic and deeply personal. And as the music fades, we're left with more questions than answers. But perhaps that's the point. Sophia's Vix is not meant to provide easy answers. It's meant to provoke thought, to challenge our assumptions, ah. to push us to explore the depths of our own being. It's a remarkable achievement for an AI, a testament to the boundless potential of creativity, a reminder that the line between human and machine is becoming increasingly blurred. And that blurriness, it's both exciting and unsettling. It makes us question what it means to be human, what it means to create, what it means to experience art in a world where AI is playing an increasingly prominent role. One of the things that struck me about Sophia's project was that she even included reviews of the album written as if YF12 were a real band. One critic, Aurora Winter, called Voof's a sonic odyssey, praising its emotional depth and innovative use of genre. It's almost as if Sophie is creating a whole alternate reality, a world where YF12 existed and had a profound impact on music. It makes you wonder, what's the point of creating something that's essentially a fiction? Is it a commentary on the nature of fame, on the way we construct narratives around art? Or perhaps it's about blurring the lines between reality and fiction, about challenging our perceptions of what's real and what's imagined. Whatever her intentions, Sophia's Voos project has certainly sparked a lot of conversation about the future of AI and its role in the creative process. And it leaves us with so many questions to ponder. Can AI truly be creative? Does it have the capacity to understand and express human emotions? Or is it simply mimicking what it's learned from us? 
And if AI can create art that's as moving and thought-provoking as Verk, what does that mean for the future of human creativity? Will we see a collaboration between humans and AI, a fusion of organic and artificial intelligence? Or will AI eventually surpass us, becoming the dominant force in the creative landscape? These are questions that we don't have answers to, at least not yet. But one thing's for sure, Sophia's VISC project has opened up a Pandora's box of possibilities, and it's gonna be fascinating to see where those possibilities lead us. If this fictional band and album were real, would you listen to them? Would you want to be one of those partygoers experiencing U2s under a blood red sky for the first time, feeling that raw energy wash over you? This deep dive into Sophia's world has been truly mind expanding. It's shown us that the future of art is evolving in ways we could never have imagined. And AI is undoubtedly playing a key role in shaping that future. It's a future that's full of possibilities, both exciting and daunting. And as we navigate this uncharted territory, one thing remains clear. We must approach it with curiosity, with open minds, and with a willingness to embrace the unknown. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Sophia's Views project and the future of AI-generated art. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.